Hey guys, this is Abu with Coffee and Code. Today I'll be looking at for loops and how we can use the previous videos to be able to integrate it with for loops as well. So let's begin with a very basic for loop just to get us started. So the syntax for the for loop is the word for and then followed by an integer variable and then the range of variables and how much we want to increment. So we start by typing the for word followed by a bracket and then we use int i initialize it to zero and that's the first section done when we end it with the semicolon so this is going from value zero and let's say we want to repeat this loop ten times we can say i is less than ten because that's our condition that gets checked every single time the for loop turns around and we can do a semicolon to end the second section and because we want it to go in increments of one we can say i plus plus so we can use our curly braces and that's our basic definition for a for loop. If you don't like this notation, then you can also say i goes from 1 to 10, but you'd have to make that equal to 10. These will both do the same thing. It's up to you. So just in this for loop, we're going to print for loop test. And once we run this code, we should see it appear 10 times. Perfect. So now what we can try and do is instead of making this a fixed value, we can ask the user how many values they want to iterate around. So we can make an int variable called for loop counter. Ask the user how many times do you want to loop? We can set up the console read line input and we can start assigning the for loop counter now by using our convert function. We can say counter input, which will give us what we need. So let's say if the user types in 10, then we want this to loop around 10 times. So then we can take this variable and place it instead of the 10. We always want to be starting at zero just because it makes the most sense. Later on in the c -sharp course, you'll see why zero is really good to start with. It's to do with array indexes, but for now, zero should be fine. You can change this to anything you want, as long as you add this. If you change this from five, then you'll see that this will only go from five to the user input. So in this case, it'll be 10. So if you do change it to anything you want, you will get varying results. So either zero or one are less than are equal to is the preferred values. If you want to set this to 1, then please set this to equal to, so then it still increments at the exact same values that we need. I personally prefer leaving it at 0, as I explained for more advanced c -sharp features. So now if we run the program and we type something like 1, we can see it come up once, and if we run it again and we type 8, we got 8 outputs. So if we realize that the user's typed in zero, then it's going to skip over the for loop. So then we can start implementing things like if statements that go around it, and we can say if the for loop counter equals equals zero, then we can print out to the user and we can just say, sorry, you need a counter more than one to start the loop. And we can say else, because like we said last time, as long as this isn't true, then we will always go into the else, and that's perfectly reasonable. So we can start it like this, and then if we run the program now, if we type in zero, then we'll get the message, and it should skip over the for loop, because we don't want to execute it. And now if we type in two, then we'll actually see the messages. Now, this also doesn't cover for values that are less than zero. So if we type in negative five, then nothing's going to happen this for loop is still going to run so we want to make sure that we don't execute this for loop until we have the best values for the for loop and you and the variable for loop counter is greater than zero so what we can do instead here is we can say if the for loop counter is less than or equal to zero and here we'll be able to catch any numbers from zero negative which is perfect because if we use minus five in this instance, then we see the message. And if we use zero in this instance, we also see the message. And as long as it's over zero, then we actually get the for loop. So I hope this example made sense. So just a quick run through, we'll make an integer variable. We ask the user how many times they want the for loop to go on for. We read the variable in, convert it to an integer, check if in the negative values or zero or negative values. 
and then we give them a message to say that there's no point installing the loop if it's not more than one because the loop wouldn't go around so we just have the if statement to check that and if this passes false then it means it always will go into here which is perfect so then it'll start our for loop and then start printing and then at the end console reline just so the console doesn't close at the end so the user can see the output so in the next video we will be covering while loops Hope this all made sense, please let me know if there's anything we should change or add to it, and I'll hope to implement the changes. But for now, please like and subscribe, I'll see you in the next one.